Good morning, folks. Today we've got two space weather stories of note. We're analyzing near-Earth energy, taking a look at some resources, and we're going to run round two of Food Watch. But we begin, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding a very calm last day on our star. There are still no sunspots and still no solar flares. Big coronal holes are dominating the view. We did indeed get to see a small filament leave the party out ahead of the coronal hole on the north. You can see the thin rope lift and snap, and wow, that one is tiny and not coming our way. Yesterday's CME analysis of the southern ejection appears to have now been confirmed by both NASA and NOAA. Both of their endless spirals show a shock wave leaving the southern hemisphere. This NOAA sim has high density in the north as well, and they both show a modest impact to Earth's magnetic field on Wednesday, the 17th. While this comports with the potential impact analysis you heard yesterday, we must remember there is a chance for it to hit tomorrow, a day early, and is likely to be less dense as shown here by NASA. And speaking of impacts, we got another little one in the solar wind stream overnight. Yesterday we saw a density rise and the wave you'll see sweep across Earth's magnetic field here is the second one. Two peaks on the orange line, the density, and each herald an increase in plasma speed of the solar wind to come. We haven't yet had the major rise following the density shock, so Earth's magnetic field is still quite calm. But we'll see on the global magnetic perturbation map that the impact is noticeable, and further intensification could lead to storm conditions, especially given the breadth of these coronal holes. Also good to note that the shock wave arrived, and indeed, that direct connection allowed quakes to subside as we're now 48 hours plus from our last magnitude 6 event. Quick note on the electron flux. The big story 10 days ago, 2 weeks ago, was the absurd electron storm that was persisting for days. We're now looking at readings bottoming out 1 million times weaker than during the storm condition. I weigh. Moving on, we're continuing to see a lack of sunspots, lack of solar flares, and all other indications of a coming solar grand minimum. As the effects on the jet stream, polar vortex, and patterns like the NAO begin their realizations, the time is running out on the paradigm of the last century. This is Food Watch. So we begin with some good news. While Kansas wheat crops took an axe during the hailstorm about a week and a half ago, to the south it appears they managed to avoid the worst of it. The same atmospheric disturbance ran both to the north where in the upper midwest parts of the alfalfa zone lost 50 to 100 percent of the crop due to the cold snap this spring, and not only that but that it came off a slightly warmer winter which got everything ahead of schedule before the cold came through through the southeast as well where yields are going to be low and further hindered by blight rust and other diseases that spread quickly and tend to ruin crops you've got a couple stories across the waters as well as potatoes were even affected by that cold that shook apple cherry and stone fruit crops in europe Meanwhile, the storms down under are causing a problem for the cane farmers, where some report being down 30 to 40 percent. If you happen to be in a viewing mood today, last night we uploaded Dr. Robitaille's second talk from Observing the Frontier 2017. With that upload, it means we have all but one of the events from our last conference posted to the playlist you have linked below, everything but my live interview with Dave Talbot, coming up. And of course, last night, registration opened for Observing the Frontier 2018. Within an hour, we had about a quarter of the VIP spots gone. There are major prize drawings for those who register early, including free lodging for the conference. We'll be giving two of those away in July. All the information is available at observatoryproject.com, and as always, it helps to be an early bird. We've got the wind maps and a null school global run, followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again right here tomorrow morning. It's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.